We pray this morning that the entrance of your word will bring light and understanding to your children. Let your word bring for the transformation that we will renew their hearts for you. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we are prayed. Let's have our seat in God's presence. You're welcome to the month of November, and this is our month of recovery, month of divine recovery. I pray divine recovery will be your portion in the name of Jesus. And our theme this morning quickly is dwelling in the presence of God, dwelling in the presence of God. And so I decided to call out a title of my sermon that I've tagged, Understanding the Secrets of His Presence. Understanding the Secrets of His Presence. I want us to understand one thing, short this morning, that it is clear throughout scriptures that the power of God is resident in his presence. And God cannot be present somewhere and his power will be absent. God cannot be present and his power absent. The reason why we lack the power of God is because we lack the presence of God. Divine carrier or divine carriers are kingdom power breakers. Those who carry divine presence, when they go outside, they break barriers. Now, what is the presence of God? What is the presence of God? Number one, the presence of God tears down obstacles, and blows down strongholds of opposition. The presence of God tears down obstacles and blows up strongholds of opposition. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 1, Isaiah 64 verse 1, he said, Oh, that you will rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains will tremble before you. Oh, that you will rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains will tremble before you. So wherever the presence of God is, there's always the breaking of strongholds and opposition. Psalm 114, verse 1 to 8. Psalm 114, verse 1 to 8. When Israel came out of Egypt, Jacob from a people of foreign tongue, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel is dominion. The sea looked and fled, the Jordan turned back. The mountains leaped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why was it, see, that you fled? Why, Jordan, did you turn back? Why, mountains, did you leap like rams? You hills like lambs. Tremble earth at the presence of God, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Listen to me, church. Mountains liquefy and rocks demystify at the almightiness of God. Matters cease to matter at the instance of his presence. Matters cease to matter at the instance of his presence. Number two, the presence of God creates openings where they were non-existent. The presence of God creates openings where they are non-existent. John chapter 20 verse 19 on the day of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be unto you. The next verse. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. The next verse. Again, Jesus said, Peace be unto you. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. Next verse. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Next verse. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. The next verse. Now, Thomas, also known as Dimidus, Dim one of the twelve were not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Next verse. A week later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Then the doors were locked, and Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be unto you. Now, let's stop here. 
the presence of God is not limited. It opens doors where it seems that there is no way. The doors were locked, but Jesus was always showing up, despite the fact that the doors were locked. If God is with you, you cannot be locked out or locked in. Anywhere God arrives becomes a passage. When God is with you, you can never be locked out or locked in. Anywhere God arrives becomes a passage. Number three, the presence of God releases divine direction. The presence of God releases divine direction. Exodus chapter 13, verse 20 to 21. After leaving Sikoth, they camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. But they, but they, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so that they could travel by day or night. The voice of direction is located in the presence of God. The manifestation of God provokes direction. The manifestation of God provokes direction from God. You must learn to understand that the face of God carries light. And one major provision of light is direction. One major provision of light is direction. So when the presence of God is with you, you can never lack direction. So anytime you realize you are lacking direction, check yourself if you are still within the presence of God. The next, verse, the next point says the presence of God activates supernatural supplies. The presence of God activates supernatural supplies. John chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. On the third day, a wedding took place in Canaan, Canaan in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the, when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman, why would you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. And we know the rest of the story. The presence of God activates supernatural supplies. The presence of God and scarcity of things are mutually exclusive. The presence of God and the scarcity of things are mutually exclusive and diametrically opposed. The presence of God and scarcity are diametrically opposed. Supplies can never run out where the master is present. The personality of the master magnetizes supply. The personality of the master magnetizes supply. The next point says the presence of God transmits healing and miracle-provoking virtue. The presence of God transmits healing and miracle-producing virtue. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And how he went around doing good and healing all who are under the power of the devil because God was with him. Because God was with him. The presence of God is the natural atmosphere for the supernatural. The presence of God is the natural atmosphere for the supernatural. You can look at Luke chapter 6, verse 19. I have some scriptural reference here, but because of my time, six chapters, Luke chapter 6, verse 19 says, And the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. The people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them. When the presence is there, there is healing. Praise the Lord. The next point says, the presence of God impacts life to the dead. The presence of God impacts life to the dead. Matthew chapter 27, verse 51 to 52 says, At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. The head shook, the rock split. Next verse. And the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. The presence of God is resurrection in capability. 
death cannot coexist with his presence. Death can never coexist with the presence of God. Because life flows naturally out of the presence of God. Life flows naturally out of the presence of God. The next point says, the presence of God impacts supernatural strength for victory in battle. The presence of God impacts supernatural strength for victory in battle. Numbers chapter 23, verse 21 to 22. And it says, no misfortune is seen in Jacob, no misery observed in Israel. The Lord their God is with them. The shout of the king is among them. The next verse, God brought them out of Egypt. They have the strength of a wild ox. God with a man is the key to unbeatable strength in life. God with man is the key to unbeatable strength in life. Divine present carriers are never weaklings. Divine presence carriers are never weaklings. The presence of God in your life equals the head of Goliath on the floor. The presence of God in your life equals the head of Goliath on the floor. So you're trying to fight your Goliath by your own strength is the reason why his head is never on the floor yet. All you need is the presence of God. The next point says the presence of God exerts judgment, executes judgment, exerts judgment on enemy altars and installations. The presence of God executes and exerts judgment on enemy altars and installations. First Samuel chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. First Samuel chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. It says, after the Philistines have captured the ark of God, they took it from Ebenezer to Hashdud. And they carried the ark into Dagon's temple and set it beside Dagon. When the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, there was Dagon falling on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. They took Dagon and put him back to his place. But the following morning when they rose, there was Dagon falling on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. His head and his hand had been broken off and they were lying on the threshold. Only his body remained. The presence of God causes any altar to be pulled down. They place the ark and they place it before a God. The God had no choice than to bow to the presence. Listen, the reason why those things have been standing and those altars have been standing against your life is because you have not allowed yourself to dwell in his presence. There is no altar that can stand the presence of God. No altar can stand the presence of God. And the next point, the presence of God brings the impactation of joy and satisfaction. The presence of God brings the impactation of joy and satisfaction. Numbers chapter 23 verse 21 says, no misfortune is seen in Jacob, no misery observed in Israel. The Lord their God is with them. The shout of the king is among them. The Lord their God is with them. The shout of the king is among them. Psalm 16 verse 11. It says, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Listen to me, church. The presence of God is an antidepressant. The presence of God is curative of depression. When you see someone who is, who is depressed, the presence of God is not in that person's life. When you see someone who is considering suicide, 
that person is not dwelling in the presence of God. Because the presence of suicide cannot stay where the presence of God is. Depression cannot stay where the presence of God is. Church, I don't know whatever altar has been standing against you. But this morning, I want you to bow down your heads and say, Lord, I declare this morning, O oh God, that I'll begin to dwell in your presence. That your presence will cause for a change in my life. In the name of Jesus, let joy come back in my life. Lord, let every altar speaking against my destiny, Lord, let them begin to fall down. In the name of Jesus,